Hey guys, this is Mike the Gaming Dad here and welcome back to the channel. In this series we are going to be playing the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Anniversary Edition and we're going to start at the very beginning. What are the best races to play as in Skyrim? Character creation is an integral part of this game and it's the first major decision any new player is faced with. In this video we will cover each race's starting skills and their racial powers and abilities. This may be more useful for newer players, but if you are a seasoned Skyrim adventurer, you may still find something new, or be inspired to start a new playthrough that isn't a sneaky archer build. So grab yourself a drink, and let's get into it. If you want to see more Skyrim content, walkthroughs and video guides, please give it a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon and then you will never miss any of my future Skyrim videos. A new game starts with the player being led into the town of Helgen along with some other prisoners. Whilst this is taking place, let's take a look at our races and their starting skills. As you can see from this table we have 10 races for the player to choose from. Argonian, Breton, Dark Elf, High Elf, Imperial, Khajiit, Nord, Orc, Redguard and Wood Elf. Players of earlier Elder Scrolls games like Oblivion will already be familiar with the races of Tamriel. Now the skills are banded into three groups, Combat, Stealth and Magic. And as you can see each race starts off with skills at level 15, with 5 skills at level 20 and 1 skill at level 25. So for example Nords, Orcs and Redguards are weighted towards the combat tree, Argonians, Khajiit and Wood Elves towards the stealth tree, and Bretons and High Elves towards the magic tree, with the Imperials being a balance of combat and magic and the Dark Elves a balance of stealth and magic. Now what I will say about the starting skills is, don't let this be a deciding factor in the race you choose. So for example, it may look like there are advantages in choosing an Orc Warrior or a High Elf Mage, but if you want to be the exact opposite, then go for it. You can easily make up the difference in starting skills quickly. What sets the races truly apart are the unique powers and abilities they have, and some of these do provide noticeable advantages to certain playstyles. We've arrived in Helgen now, so let's get into my tier list of who the best races are in Skyrim. Coming in at number 10, sadly we have the Wood Elf. Now the Wood Elf is the race that the game sets up as being archers, and the archer is a really popular and powerful way of playing Skyrim. The problem with the Wood Elves is, they aren't the best race to play as an archer, and their racial ability and powers just don't cut it when compared to some of the other races. Now their racial ability gives them a 50% resistance to both poison and disease, which sounds really powerful, but they aren't ever really a problem in Skyrim unless you mod the game. 50% resistance to poison can be useful when fighting spiders, but it's not going to make a huge difference to you and you can quite easily just take a cure poison potion if you need to. And disease resistance is probably the weakest of all the abilities because, again, diseases just aren't a problem. If you do contract one from a wild animal, you can just use a cure disease potion or visit any shrine to cure yourself. Now their racial power is called Command Animal, which allows you to take command of any animal for 60 seconds. This will calm them down if they are attacking you, or make them fight on your side against your enemies. This is kinda cool, but the problem is like a lot of the powers, it can only be used once a day, and once you get the Animal Allegiance Shout, which does the same thing, except it can be used every minute, it renders Command Animal useless. Another factor that is worth taking into consideration with the Wood Elf is, they are the smallest of the playable races in Skyrim. This means that they move the slowest across the map. The difference is only small, but if you are someone that likes adventuring through the wilderness and opts not to fast travel anywhere, or if you play with a mod that disables fast travel completely, then it will make a difference to you. So unfortunately, this race comes in 10th. Playing as an archer is a really fun and powerful way to play Skyrim but I would recommend choosing another race over the Wood Elf. Coming in at number 9 we have the Red Guards. Now as the game sets Wood Elves up as the classic archer, Red Guards are your sword and shield warriors, but they also fall the same way, as in there are races more suited to this playstyle, and it comes down to the abilities. Like the Wood Elves, the Red Guards have a 50% resistance to poison, but as we've already covered, this isn't a particularly strong ability as poison doesn't pose the player too many problems. Their racial power is Adrenaline Rush which will allow you to regenerate stamina 10 times faster for 60 seconds. This can be powerful early on in the game. As we can see here, I'm able to rush to attack these bandits, use power attacks and quickly regain my stamina to reach the next target and continue to fight. The problem is Adrenaline Rush loses value the further you get into the game. This is because when you level up, you get to put extra points into health, magic or stamina, and as a warrior you would always want to put some into stamina. So the more stamina you have, the less quickly you will lose it all. There is also the vegetable soup trick which we can make using a cabbage, leek, potato and tomato and when consumed this regenerates one stamina a second for 12 minutes 
This means you can use power attacks every second for 12 minutes, so if you make use of this trick, you don't need adrenaline rush. In at number 8 we have the Imperials. Now the Imperials can be an interesting race depending on the style of play you are going for, and one of their abilities can be useful if you like a challenge in play on legendary difficulty, which we'll get onto in a second. First let's look at their active effect, Imperial Luck. This adds a few extra gold coins to any chest you loot. This bonus is small, it will only be a handful at a time, but it does add up. This isn't a reason to pit the Imperial though, as there are plenty of ways to make money in Skyrim, and I will showcase this if you watch my best start guide. The Imperial's active power is called Voice of the Emperor, and this will calm any nearby people for 60 seconds. It's basically a weaker version of the illusion spell Pacify. Now this can be useful if you find yourself surrounded or ambushed and need to make a quick getaway, or it may be that you want to stay in the fight but just heal yourself or draw a weapon and then attack. Just be mindful though that as soon as you strike once, the whole mob will come after you again, as shown here. This ability could save you though if you are playing on more challenging difficulties and suddenly find yourself facing multiple enemies at once, but it's not one of the better abilities, as once you have the spell Pacify it's useless, and it also won't work on enemies out of its range, and for that reason Imperials are 8th in my list. Coming in at number 7 we have the Dark Elves. The Dark Elves are actually a good race to play as if you want to just have fun and play around as an offensive based character. Their racial power is probably one of the best abilities visually and it can be affected if you like to get up close. But there's a theme with the races in the bottom 5 and it's to do with their powers losing value the further into the game you get or just being replaced entirely by a spell and that's the case here too. Let's start off with the Dark Elves active effect which gives a 50% resistance to all fire. This is really helpful against fire atronox, fire mages and fire breathing dragons. The main issue with it is it's a bit random though. Other than fire atronox, no one enemy uses fire type spells, so you can't really rely on it or use it strategically. Their racial power is called Ancestor's Wrath which creates a flame cloak around you for 60 seconds which will damage any enemy which gets too close. And this looks really cool, but it's basically a weaker version of the flame cloak spell which isn't hard to come by as it's only an adept level spell. Ancestor's Wrath is also only useful if you are up close, if you're fighting from a distance you can't use it. That being said, I rank Dark Elves 7th because they do gain some value if you want to play as a vampire, for example as part of the Dawnguard questline. All vampires have a 50% weakness to fire, so the Dark Elves ability actually cancels this out, which makes them the best choice for a vampire, which is a nice perk. Coming in at number 6 we have the Nords, the natives of Skyrim. And you're probably thinking, how can the Nords not be in the top 5 races? This one was a difficult choice, but I'm not basing this on my favourites. It's the races which have abilities or powers that are useful across a number of playstyles, difficulties and scenarios. As I said with the Dark Elves though, if you just want to have fun, then playing as a Nord Warrior is definitely a fun way to play. Or maybe a Nord Mage shunned by his kin for practising magic, but one who is naturally gifted in the arcane arts. A Nord definitely feels the more natural choice to play if you want realism wandering the wilds of the cold north, and especially if you think of who the Dragonborn would actually be. Nord feels the most natural to me, so let's get into what the Nord brings to the table. Firstly we have their racial ability which provides a 50% resistance to frost, and this is definitely more useful than the Dark Elves 50% resistance to fire. That's because we are in Skyrim after all, there are more enemies which use frost magic such as frost atronox and ice wraiths, and within the tombs and crypts of Skyrim you will find the undead Draugr which use frost magic as well. Now their active power is called Battle Cry, which will make targets flee from you for 30 seconds. Like the Imperial's power Voice of the Emperor, this is great on harder difficulties if you find yourself suddenly surrounded and need to clear some space or buy some time, but it is only a weaker version of the Master Level Illusion spell Hysteria, although that's not one that you'll get early on. My main issue with Battle Cry is it only buys you time to recover, regroup or run away, it doesn't actually help you win the fight. As shown here, I've entered this mage's lair and I'm probably about to be killed by these mages. Now I use battle cry, but as you can see, the mages flee from me. I probably make killing them harder than it actually should be by swinging and missing, but because the enemies will constantly run from you, it can be hard to actually track them down and kill them, and it was running into his own trap that actually killed this poor mage. Even when I'm playing as a Nord, I think I've only used this ability a handful of times. It generally just stays unused a lot of the time, and that's why the Nord is sixth in my list. A top choice for the Dragonborn, or fighting as a Stormcloak in the Skyrim Civil War, but the top 5 all bring slightly more to the table. In at number 5 we have the Reptilian race, the Argonians, definitely one of the coolest looking races in Skyrim. 
that Argonians were actually the race I played on my very first playthrough of Skyrim in 2012. They are actually unique as they have more abilities than any other race. Most of the races have one ability and one power, so two in total. The Argonians actually have four in total, but this isn't why they are fifth on my list. It comes down to their racial power which we will get onto. Their first ability isn't actually listed here and it's plus six unarmed damage from their claws, which is pretty nice, but if you are doing an unarmed build, the better choice is the Khajiit which gives plus 12 unarmed damage. Their second ability is Resist Disease, which we have covered right at the beginning of the video with the Wood Elves, and Disease Resistance is sadly the worst ability in the game, it just isn't a problem in Skyrim as diseases are so easily cured. The Argonian's third ability is Underwater Breathing, which is unique to them. Now when I first picked the Argonian I thought this is going to be a great ability, there must be loads of places in Skyrim where Underwater Breathing will be useful, and there are a few but not as many as I was hoping, and you can also just take a potion of water breathing if you wanted to. I do think Bethesda missed a trick with this ability by not putting more underwater locations within the game. Now you are probably thinking, you've listed three abilities here that aren't amazing, why is the Argonian number 5 in your list? It solely comes down to their racial power, Hist Skin. This will increase your health regeneration tenfold for 60 seconds, basically the health version of the Red Guard's Adrenaline Rush. This is a fantastic ability for any character build, capable of keeping you in otherwise impossible fights, and unlike some of the other powers already covered, you can keep on fighting whilst it is active. Here are a few basic examples of its uses. You can use it if surrounded by a few enemies at once, meaning you won't be overpowered. Look at what happens to my health bar here as I start taking damage. It's back up to full in no time, allowing me to win this fight versus these Draugr. It can also be really useful versus otherwise difficult boss fights. The damage this Draugr Overlord does to me during this clip would otherwise kill me, but I'm able to recover quickly and stay in the fight. I know when I've played on Legendary difficulty, as an Argonian this ability has saved me a few times when fighting difficult foes. This ability isn't just useful for warrior type builds though, it can be great if you're playing as an offensive type mage and you start taking damage up close, or even as a defensive mage, for example a conjurer where you might prefer to keep your enemies at a distance. Inevitably at some point you'll find yourself backed into a corner and needing a way out. And that's why the Argonian comes in at number 5. This ability will allow you to play a number of different styles. Maybe even as an assassin who prefers to skulk in the shadows and use powers of poison and deception. Or maybe even the classic sneaky archer build, shooting bandits before they even see you. His skin will still be there as your get out of jail free card if you need it. In at number 4 we have the High Elves, now for ages in Skyrim I didn't play as the High Elves as I really didn't like the Thalmor and I always took great pleasure in having a bit of fun with them if I ever saw a patrol of them on one of the many roads between the holes of Skyrim, but I was actually doing myself a disservice as they're one of the best races to play if you want to be a mage, and they're probably the best race if you want to be an all out offensive build. Their racial ability is called Highborn and this grants High Elves an additional 50 magicka. This is huge early on in the game. It's essentially the same as getting 5 free levels, which is a powerful head start for any mage build. Their racial power is also called Highborn, and this will regenerate 25% of your magicka per second for 60 seconds. Again, early on this is pretty nutty. It effectively means you can just keep recasting over and over again, which is usually the time when you will need it the most, i.e. when you are close to death or in a really hairy fight. Now this isn't the hardest fight I've been in, but I'll demonstrate what Highborn actually does here. Watch how quickly my Magicka regenerates once I activate this skill. I'm back up to full Magicka in no time after casting a few Fireball spells, and this bandit is down, quickly followed by the second bandit over here. Now I was about to carry on my journey down to Falkreath, but I spotted a Thalmor patrol on the road east. Remember what I said about those? Yeah, I best deal with that. Even though I'm a High Elf myself, Good job that this highborn is still active and I have little problem dealing with these mages. If you make use of the enchanting skill, it's possible to reduce the cost of some magicka skills to 0%, for example destruction magic, by enchanting 4 items with 25% magicka cost reduction. But when I've played as a pure mage I've wanted to avoid this, but it's up to you. High elves are probably the best choice for an offensive type mage, so why not make them your next playthrough and head over to the College of Winterhold. Our number 3 spot goes to the feline race and Tamriel's biggish consumer of skooma, the Khajiit. How awesome are the Khajiit? Definitely up there as one of the coolest looking races within Skyrim, 
and one of the more natural choices when thinking about creating a stealthy thief or assassin type build, but this actually isn't the playstyle that I think best suits them overall. Their most suited playstyle is actually an unarmed build. Why? Because of their racial ability clause. It states in game that it does 15 points of damage. This isn't actually strictly correct. The base damage of an unarmed attack is usually 4, and for a Khajiit it's 10. And because of the clause ability which adds 12 on top, not 15, you reach a total of 22 damage. So it's actually 5.5 times more than what a Nord does for example, which is insane. What this actually means is the Khajiit's base unarmed attack does more than the Dragon Bone Mace, which has a base of 17. I'll demonstrate how strong it is versus these bandits here. Watch how quickly they go down. The first bandit nearly fell in two hits. The second bandit does fall in two. And now look at the difference when I equip this iron sword. Probably six hits to take this bandit down. Now I'll go back to the claws. One punch, knockout. That's it, done. The unarmed build is quite unconventional, but it is a really fun way of playing and the Khajiit does it really well. Now their racial power is called Night Eye, and this will allow you to see clearly in the dark without the need for a light source. And this is only occasionally useful though, as I found that even at night time or in the dark dungeons, you generally have enough light to see. I'll activate it here, and as you can see, it doesn't make too much difference. The sky was always quite light anyway. It just gives it this sort of hazy effect. Even inside Embershard Mine here, once activated, the light doesn't change a great deal. Everything just gets a little misty. This power is unique though in that it can be activated multiple times, not once a day like a lot of the other powers. But I honestly never get tired of playing as an unarmed Khajiit brawler, it's such a fun way to play. Watch me launch this bandit off this bridge WWE style. Fantastic. But where did I put my skooma? Second place on my list goes to the Orc, another race which I actually overlooked for ages when first playing Skyrim and it's because I'd assumed that they were a one-trick pony. The Orc is the opposite of the Argonian, in the sense that they only have one racial power and no racial abilities, but trust me, it's a good one. Definitely quality over quantity. The Orc's racial power is called Berserk, and for 60 seconds it means you take half damage, but inflict double damage on the enemies. Now this is a great ability, basically turning you into an unstoppable force of destruction, being able to take on entire swarms of enemies, now initially I looked at this, plus the orc starting skills, heavy armour, two handed and block and so on, and assumed the your classic heavy armoured warrior, and this is a fun way to play don't get me wrong, but I didn't want to play that yet so I chose someone else. I couldn't have been more wrong, this ability is actually insane across a number of builds. If you make use of the Raloff stealth trick you can actually level your sneak to 100 right at the start of the game, but doing it to 50 will allow you to unlock the right side of the sneak skill tree primarily backstab which deals 6 times more damage with one handed weapons, deadly aim for 3 times as much with bows, and assassin's blade for 15 times as much with daggers. Now if you think of a sneaky archer or a stealth assassin, two of the most popular ways to play Skyrim, and combine that with the orc's ability, Berserk, you can actually do the equivalent of 12 times damage with a one handed weapon, 6 times with a bow, and a ridiculous 30 times with a dagger, which basically makes the orc your strongest assassin or archer in the game, when Berserk is activated. You basically become a one shot wonder, capable of taking down entire camps with single hits as long as you can stay hidden. It's the perfect ability if you need to take out a target in one hit for example, as part of some of the Thieves Guild or Dark Brotherhood quests. But if you do want to stick to two handed weapons, it's still an incredible skill and one that you'll have lots of fun with, wading into fights and causing absolute carnage. And that's why the Orc is number two on my list. And finally we have our top spot, which goes to the Breton. The Orcs had a fantastic ability for anyone who does damage with a weapon, but it doesn't work if you are a mage. Bretons are fantastic across the board, and this is because of their versatility and strength when taking on any form of magic in the game. Both their abilities support this, and both of them are fantastic right through to the end game. So let's take a look at them. First we have 25% magic resistance, in my opinion this is better than both the Dark Elves 50% resistance to fire and the Nords 50% resistance to frost as it applies across the board, even to shock spells. You won't be weaker against any form of magic you come across. What is great about this ability as well is you can stack it with other abilities in the game to increase the resistance even higher. For example going southwest of Dawnstar to the Lordstone, which is just here on the map. What the Lordstone actually does is grant you additional magic resistance which stacks on top of the Breton's base resistance. Let's take a look at this. 
We can see here again the base 25% resistance and now we have another 25% from the Lordstone. So we are already blocking half of all spell damage before we've even started. And you can stack this even further by putting three perks into magic resistance, 10% at a time up to 80%. I do recommend only going two levels up to 70% though because you can also complete a quest called the Book of Love which gives the Agent of Mara perk which grants another 15% and with this you will have reached a game cap of 85% magic resistance. Now the Breton's Racial Power Dragon Skin will allow you to absorb 50% of the magicka from hostile spells for 60 seconds, which again stacks really well with some of the in-game mechanics. Let's take a look at this. If you head directly south from Windhelm here, eventually you will reach the Atronach Stone, which is here. Now the Atronach Stone gives you 50 more magic and 50% spell absorption at the cost of your magicka regenerating 50% slower. This means that when you activate Dragon Skin, you basically can absorb all the magic from hostile spells for 60 seconds and this means if you're a mage you can keep casting your spells continually. Both of these abilities do set the Breton apart from the rest in my opinion. They're so versatile and suit a number of different builds or whether your character is offensive or defensive based. There is one final build which they also suit though which involves necromancy and using this stone, the ritual stone. When activated this allows you to reanimate all the undead around you and this is such a fun way to play, probably the most fun I've had with any build in Skyrim and I will be doing a build guide on this very soon so do look out for that. So there you have it, the Breton takes top spot in my list of playable races in Skyrim. There are some really good races in the top 5, some suit specific playstyles like the pure mage high elf, the unarmed Khajiit or the stealth orc assassin but none are quite as versatile as the Breton. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe, hit like and the bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. I will be posting build guides for some of these top races as well as my best start guide, tips, tricks and walkthroughs for all things Skyrim. See you next time.